uh, it came a little bit out of a dichotomy. There were those who wanted the IGF to turn into an organization very structured with working groups on this and on that. And there were others who insisted the mandate was much uh, more modest. The IGF was an annual meeting and that's it. And then in the discussion, someone came up, said, well, maybe there might be dynamic coalitions emerging from the discussions. And in Athens, I think we had six dynamic coalitions and then they sort of came and went. And uh, uh, some of them were more dynamic than others, uh, but my feeling was that most of them were not that dynamic. Uh, some of them only existed to organize an annual meeting just to get together and they and then a confusion crept in that they were here to create a workshop at the annual meeting. Uh, so we sort of tried to say, well, this cannot be the purpose of a dynamic coalition if you just do go around and uh, organize one meeting. So basically we said we offer a meeting room to each annual, each dynamic coalition provided they uh, have some sort of sign of activity between the meetings, provided that they have reports of their activity. Now we have delisted some of them who are dormant dynamic coalition. They can requalify to be listed if they show a sign of life. But on the whole, I have not seen that much coming out of them. Quite often it is linked to personalities who are very active in driving an issue and then they are transferred or take on another function and uh, it hangs with them. And of course, one of the weaknesses, uh, we cannot offer any structured support. It really depends on the volunteers who are willing to push this. Two of the dynamic coalitions we have on di climate change and on accessibility for people with disabilities are actually supported by the ITU. Uh, so they have some kind of institutional support, whereas the others live on the enthusiasm and the drive of their respective members. Uh, now, dynamic coalition, therefore, are not just uh, to this. I mean, I haven't seen the agenda. I know that Chivas has a tremendous enthusiasm and tremendous energy, and he manages to uh, bring together, he has a, a, a tremendous convening capacity uh, I was at his uh, workshop last year. I saw the list of speakers. I thought they will never turn up, and they all turned up. So I was uh, really uh, was quite uh, enthusiastic about it on that workshop. But I don't really know what the plans are to convert the workshop into something more. And um, my advice to you would be not just to discuss substance, which is very interesting, the core values, and then it's a worthwhile discussion, but if uh, you think you want to perform a dynamic coalition, you ought to also consider on how to move forward and who does what and what your internal work program is. But I if you meet the next time in Kenya, if everything goes as we hope for, then I think that would not be good enough. You need somebody who will take on the responsibility write the reports and I think there should be some activity between the two annual meetings. You don't need to have a physical meeting, of course you can have virtual exchanges, you can have, but uh, there are certain minimum uh, standards. We were never able to define what these minimal standards are. Whenever we started the discussion, they were, well, could be this, could be that, but basically uh, what we'd expect is uh, an annual